If you're going to do chemistry, learning how to make an ampule is something that you need to know. Even if you only learn one glass working technique, this is the one to know. Ampules are the only way to store vital chemicals long term. Chemicals like bromine are notorious for their ability to leak out of any bottle, no matter how good the seal is. Other chemicals are reactive to air, which leak into the bottle over time. If alkaline metals are wanted to be stored in mineral oil, will work. Even under oil, the surface will oxidize and form a skin, but storing it in an argon-filled ampule, the beautiful sheen of the metal can be preserved. An ampule can not only last years, but centuries. Everything I do in this video can be done with basic tools found at your local hardwood store, or without. The torch can be switched for a map pro torch, the glass tongs for regular pliers, the blow hose assembly can be done without. Just make sure that the end of your tubes you're blowing to have been flame polished to avoid cuts. This will make it more difficult, more care will be needed to make sure the end of the tube is nice and round. All a blow hose tube assembly is, is a tube that spins that allows air to be blown into the spinning tube. It makes projects a lot easier to see what you're doing, and if you stay making glass for long, you're going to end up needing one for larger projects. We will begin by making a test tube. This step can be skipped if you're starting with a test tube. They are quite simple to produce and allow you to practice skills that are used in almost every glass working projects. Now like most things, there are many methods to produce a test tube. With all of them, you're going to need to begin with a length of tubing. It's helpful if one side has already been fire polished. This makes it safer and easier to work with. Next, attach the blow hose assembly to the polished end. Now we are ready to start. Slowly bring the end of the tube in the heat while spinning. It is important to not stop spinning. Doing so will cause the glass to become uneven. Now that it has been heated up to working temperature, the glass is pulled together to a point using the flame to cut and remove excess glass. Melt the tip, remove from the flame, and gently apply air into the tube. This causes a dome to appear at the end. Repeat this process till the full dome for the bottom of the test tube is formed. The goal is to have an even thickness all around. If this is not achieved, simply remelt and try again. Remember, keep spinning. Now that the bottom dome is made, let cool, and once cooled, the next step can be begin. You have a choice now how you can fill the ampule. Now you can seal it completely, or in the next step, create a narrow neck and fill with more volatile chemicals. I will be showing you both methods. Decrease the fuel while leaving oxygen the same. This will shrink the flame to a point. If you are using a blowtorch, just shrink the flame. Decide how long you want the ampule to be. Keep in mind that anything you put in, you need to leave space to avoid thermal decomposition due to the heat of the melting glass. Keep rotating the glass. It gets hotter and hotter. The heated section will begin to droop. Keep rotating. Once enough glass has melted so that when pulled, the even thickness of the glass will not change. Remove from the flame and pull to create the neck. The goal here is to shrink the area needed to heat to close the ampule. The larger the area is, the harder it is to close. If you want to save this ampule for later, then set it off to the side once the glass is hardened. Now that the glass has cooled to the touch, we need to cut it. Now because this is thicker glass, I will be using the glass rod technique. We're going to be cutting it with a file, then adding a little bit of water. This water helps 
weaken the glass and makes it easier to cut. Next we're going to heat up a small rod of glass and press it onto that section where the cut has been made. This will then cause the glass to break and we can easily snap it from here. If you're ready and have the material in it, bring it back in the flame soon after the pull. The sooner the better. Air expands as it's heated. So when we make the neck, the air in the tube has been heated, making the ampule easier to seal. If you wait too long, the air will expand while sealing and create a weird seal or an uneven bulbous shape. If the hot air expansion is exploited, sealing the ampule becomes super easy to do. Now in this clip, I actually did all the steps at once while keeping it in the flame, which this can in some cases make it a lot easier to seal, as you're not taking it out of the heat, allowing it to cool and allowing the air to contract. This way, the air stays nice and hot inside, and it's super easy to seal as the glass stays nice and hot and easily workable. Now at this time, I don't have any volatile chemicals that need to be sealed but I will be looking more in depth at sealing volatile chemicals when I produce such chemicals in the future, such as bromine and chlorine for my element series. Thank you for watching to the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading.